Hi again. Amadeus Avogadro of Avogadro number fame came up with a rather ingenious way of using volumes of gases to predict reactants and products. Today we're going to take a look at these reacting volumes. First I'll start off with a statement of his law. Equal volumes of gas at the same temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of particles. So let's say I have a container that has helium gas and another container the same size that has nitrogen gas. They're both at 101 kilopascals and the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. His law would state that if there were perhaps five atoms of helium present in the one container, there would be five molecules of nitrogen present in the other container because they're at the same temperature and pressure and they're the same volume. I want to consider a few other properties of, of these gases. So, the number of moles they each contain. To convert number of particles to moles, we divide by Avogadro's number, 6 times 10 to the minus 23. So both of these having the same number of particles would also have exactly the same number of moles of particles. Now what about density? Well, density is mass over volume. They both have the same volume, but they would have different masses. In fact, the nitrogen gas relative molar mass is 28, hydrogens being 4. I would consider the nitrogen gas to probably be about 7 times denser. What about their average kinetic energies? Well, they're both at the same temperature, and by definition, temperature measures the average kinetic energy. So if both of these substances are at the same temperature, they must both have the same average kinetic energy. Now what about the speeds of the particles? Here I have the expression for kinetic energy. It's one half mv squared, and at the same temperature, these two quantities must equal each other. First I'll cut off the halves here, cut, cancel them to make it a little easier to see. In the second line, you'll notice I made the mass of helium small. That's because its relative molar mass is, small, is smaller than the relative molar mass of nitrogen, which I've made larger. So the left-hand side has a small mass, and the right-hand side has a large mass. But these two quantities must equal each other. That could only be accomplished if the velocity of helium was much greater than the velocity of nitrogen. So the particles would be moving faster over in the helium container than in the nitrogen container. Let's look at the connection between moles and volume, provided we're at the same temperature and pressure. So again, I have my container with five atoms of helium in it. And I'm going to plot this on a graph. So my five atoms, are five, or five over six times 10 to the 23rd moles, creates a point on that graph. If I now double the volume, I would have to have double the number of particles, according to his law. And that would give me the second point. And similarly, if I triple the number of particles, I would have triple the volume. So here we can see we get a straight line. And that allows me to say that at the same temperature and pressure, the volume is exactly proportional to the number of moles. Double the volume, you double the moles, and vice versa. And that's shown mathematically in the following. Now let's put these ideas together now with some reactions. Let's consider, if you would, carbon solid reacting with oxygen gas. I've got extra carbon solid, and I have two liters, uh, or two decimeters cubed, of oxygen gas. I'd like to predict how much carbon dioxide gas I'm going to get. So, let's look at the idea. There's my oxygen present in its container, and from the balanced chemical equation, I can see that each oxygen molecule produces, in a one-to-one -one ratio, exactly the same number of carbon dioxides. Now, if these two substances are at the same temperature and pressure, since I have the same number of particles, I must also have exactly the same volume. So I can say that I would produce two decimeters cubed of carbon dioxide. Let's try another example. The synthesis or making of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. I'm going to start off with 250 cubic centimeters of nitrogen, and I'd like to figure out how much I have of each of the other gases. So, there's my container that contains the nitrogen in it, and I'm going to represent that with four particular molecules in it. Now, when that reacts, because of the 1 to 2 ratio, I would produce twice as many ammonia. So four particles of nitrogen would end up producing eight particles of my ammonia. All of these are at the same temperature and pressure. So since I have twice the number of particles produced, eight, I would have to have twice the volume produced. So I would have 500 cubic centimeters of ammonia. 
As far as the hydrogen is concerned, it reacts in a 1 to 3 ratio. So four particles of nitrogen would require 12 of oxygen. That 12 would exactly fit into three containers, giving me 750 cubic centimeters. So I can see from up above that the volumes of the gases are in exactly the same ratio as the stoichiometric coefficients. The 1 to 3 to 2 is exactly the same ratio as 250, 750 to 500. But again, I must emphasize, all these gases must be at the same temperature and pressure to apply this, and it only applies to gases, not liquids or, or solids. Let's employ this idea now in a limiting reagent question. So I'm going to take some sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas and make sulfur trioxide. And I'm given starting amounts of the two reactants. And I'm asking you, first of all, how much sulfur dioxide would I produce? You might recall that from an earlier section on reacting, uh, limiting reactants, I need to consider the two possibilities. So starting with 500 cubic centimeters of sulfur dioxide and all of these gases being at the same temperature and pressure, I can employ the ratios. It's two to two or one to one, so 500 cubic centimeters of sulfur dioxide would produce exactly the same number of particles of sulfur trioxide, and as a result, exactly the same volume. If I do this with the oxygen, it's a one to two ratio, so I would produce twice as many particles, and hence twice the volume. The rule is you can only make the smaller amount, so as a result, this line doesn't happen. I only produce 500 cubic centimeters of sulfur trioxide. Now how much of the oxygen is left over? So again I go back to my limiting reactant and notice that there exists a 2 to 1 ratio between the sulfur dioxide and oxygen. Hence if I have 500 I would require 250, a 2 to 1 ratio. So I had 300, 250 were used, leaving me 50 remaining. My final volume of gas then would be the two of them put together. The excess plus how much I produced or 550 cubic centimeters. So you can see that using gases or volumes of gases we can bypass the need to use mass and molar masses in these equations and you can get quite an elegant and fast solution. Thanks for watching. Comments and questions are always welcome.